In November 1839, 23 liberated African residents in Freetown, Sierra Leone, addressed a petition composed in stilted English to the governor of Sierra Leone, pleading that Her Majesty Queen Victoria of England be graciously disposed to assist them to return to their own country, Nigeria, and establish for them a colony in Badagri. The governor duly transmitted this petition to Lord Rousseff, the British Secretary of Foreign Affairs. The response, however, was not very enthusiastic. The Secretary of State minutes, we cannot send them without giving them security and protection, which implies expense, but they can go if they wish. They wish to go. So, several of the liberated enslaved Africans in Syria alone emigrated back to Nigeria at their own expense. Badagri was the emigrant destination back to their native land, though some of them later moved on to Abeokuta and to Lagos. About a year this emigration process began, the superintendent of the Methodist Mission in Syria alone received a letter from James Ferguson one of the emigrants in Badagri, requesting that missionaries be sent to them urgently. The request was sent to the Methodist Home Committee in London and an energetic missionary, the Reverend Thomas Brett Freeman, was deployed from the station in Cape Coast to proceed to Badagri. He arrived there on 24 September 1842, a day since regarded as symbolizing the origin of Christian missionary in Nigeria. The Apostolic Faith Church is a worldwide religious organization with international headquarters in Portland, Oregon. Our route stems from a 1906 revival on Azusa Street in Los Angeles. On Christmas Day of that year, the founder of our work, Florence Lois Crawford came to Portland and we marked that as the official beginning of our work. Since 1906, our organization has grown and established black churches in the United States and around the world. We currently have more than 50 churches in the United States. Our international outreach includes congregation on most continents including more than 600 churches in Nigeria alone. As a Trinitarian and Fundamental Church, our doctrinal beliefs are the simple Bible truths. All Apostolic Faith Churches uphold the same doctrinal structure. The President of our organization and Superintendent General of our churches worldwide is Rev. Darrell D. Lee, who has held this position since July 2000. A primary means of evangelism in Apostolic Faith Church is the printing and distribution of Christian literatures. We publish a quarterly magazine entitled Highway, which is designed to encourage spiritual growth in believers, which is available online by or by mail. We also print numerous pamphlets and small booklets designed to lead people to the Lord. A unique feature of this ministry is that we never sell our publications. They are printed and mailed throughout the world free of charge. In over 100 years of literature ministry, God has provided financially for this outreach through tithes and offerings, even though collections are never taken in our services. The work in Africa is the largest portion of the Apostolic Faith Organization. More than 24 countries on the African continent have Apostolic Faith Churches. The largest work is in Nigeria, where there are more than 600 branches, many of them with congregation numbering in the thousands. The outreach effort of the Apostolic Faith Church on the continent of Africa originated more than 80 years ago 
The missionary in Liberia received tracts and distributed them in that area. A man by the name of Frank N. also received gospel tracts from the Apostolic Faith Church while he was a missionary in the Republic of the Sudan and Nigeria. Upon returning to the United States, he wanted to meet the people who published those tracts. He agreed with and loved what he found in Portland, and the Lord laid it on his heart to stay and work in the church printing plant, translating the apostolic faith literature into the Hausa language of northern Nigeria was one of the projects he undertook. This literature was sent to various areas of Africa where the local people translated the materials into other dialects and returned it to Portland. It was then printed, mailed back to Africa and was the means of many being saved on this continent. As early as the November-December 1909 edition of the Apostolic Faith paper, mention was made of the Apostolic Faith mission as Johannesburg and of two missionaries in that area. There were extensive reports of miracles happening in their midst. A man in Gold Coast, now Ghana, by the name of Peter van der Poel, received some gospel tracts from Apostolic Faith Organization. He sought for and received the deeper spiritual experiences and began establishing Apostolic Faith churches in that country. In 1948, he attended the Apostolic Faith Church Camp Meeting Convention in Portland, where he learned more about the church doctrine and practices. While there, he presented the needs of the African people, pleading, trusting, and believing that God will send someone to help the believers in his country. During that convention, George Hughes, a minister at the Portland headquarters, made a definite dedication to the Lord. Noted in his diary on the date of July 3, 1948, where this word volunteered for service in Africa or anywhere in the world. Reverend Huge offer was accepted and on October 10, 1948, he departed for a seven-month trip that began in Accra, Ghana. The trip was in answer to the call of thousands not only in Ghana but in other parts of Africa as well. During this first trip, he toured the branches in Ghana and also traveled through Togo, Bene, and Nigeria, doing evangelistic work among Christians, pagan, and fetish worshippers. A minister in Lagos, Nigeria, Timothy Oshokoya, had received some apostolic literature. In it, he found the answer to the longing of his heart for holiness and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He steadfastly upheld the doctrine of their Bible as preached by the Apostolic Faith and moved aggressively and selflessly to distribute the papers and establish a place of worship. He organized the first camp meeting in Lagos held in 1949 and visited the Portland Camp Meeting in 1951. On his initial trip to Africa, Reverend Huge met with a number of these leaders and helped to organize some of the groups into churches. Four years later, Reverend Huge returned to Africa. After six months of constant activity, Reverend Huge accomplished a vision. He prepared his final report to give to the overseer on his return to headquarters. Just before taking off from Africa, he wrote, Hope the next journey is heavenward with the bride of Christ. As his flight began, he became ill. The airplane landed in Liberia and he was taken to the hospital, but he died very soon afterward. He was laid to rest in his beloved Africa at a cemetery in Habel, Liberia. Responsibility for the huge volume of correspondence coming from Africa to Portland headquarters was then assigned to Ruth Ashwell. Reverend Oshokoya visited Portland again in 1956 and was greatly impacted by his trip. Upon his return to Nigeria, an orchestra was formed, a printing plant established, and construction was begun on a tabernacle in Lagos. 
the vision of Africa for Christ began to grow in his heart since Reverend Hugh Strip, representative of the Headquarter Church in Portland, had made many visits to various parts of Africa. Daryl Lee, the current Superintendent General, made his first visit to Nigeria and Ghana in the early part of 2002 and was impressed and delighted with the progress being made in those areas of Africa and the dedication and zeal of the gospel workers. The motto of Apostle Faith Churches continue to be Africa for Christ and God is abundantly blessing each effort to win souls for Him. God placed the burden of village evangelism in the heart of Kola Oshoko in the year 1985, who related it to the then Africa overseer of the Apostolic Faith Work in Africa, Reverend Josiah Hulubo de Shoyinka, and was given the opportunity to go out and evangelize in rural communities. This brought about reading of the Sunday school quarterlies at the Orudu village and later progressed to playing of the previous Sunday school and devotional service cassette obtained from the Africa headquarters in Antony, which is returned after being played using an amplified speaker and a car battery. The attendants keep growing and report back to the Africa overseer, who requested that all the villagers be brought for camp meeting, taking responsibility of their transportation and later welcomed them in his office and he prayed for them. While that is on, Brother Jacob Oloronto B. Bakari, along with his sibling, moved to Okiaru in 1982. This small family gathered in their sitting room, which is directly opposite the church main gate, with friends joining them to study the Sunday school quarterly. They all have a boarding to have a place of worship closer as Anthony is now a far distance to them. Brother Elijah Bakari met with Reverend Shoenka to inform him about the challenges being faced. Reverend Shoenka requested that the families gathering together should see him. Brother Elijah and Jacob Bakari with their wives met with Reverend Shoenka in his office who said they are enough to start a church and that they should look for a place to start using. After a while of searching, it was discovered that they could use the part of Madame Maltida Folashade Campbell building for prayer meeting and relate the information to her. She asked of the name of the church and was told it is the Apostolic Faith. She replied that she knows the church, that it's a big church with a large congregation, and that also she has been looking forward to people that can use her property for prayer meetings and she decided to give the land to the small group. Brother Elijah Bakari make a quick response to relate the development to Reverend Shoenka, who was happy about the development. But there was a little delay from the headquarters in visiting the location for the reason being that Brother Shoenka was expecting to see Brother Shkola Oshoko which he announced during the Sunday services to see him, but did not show up. The decision was finally taken to move ahead without him. On the same date of departure, Brother Kola showed up at Brashuinka's office, who seeing him coming out of his office was surprised and asked about his disappearance. Brother Oshoko made it known that due to his job, he had relocated to Abelkuta and could not carry on with the evangelism for some time and was coming down from Abelkuta just to pay Reverend Shoenka a visit. This brought about a sober mood. The team comprising Reverend Shoenka, Brother Lamijulo, Brother Kola Oshoko, and Sister Funke Awumoyi visited Okiaru, received by the Bakaris, and met with Madame Campbell to appreciate a gang gesture and to know also the cost
but something remarkable happened when Mrs. Falashade Campbell said that God had placed it in her heart to give the ongoing project of a supermarket, including two rooms and an open space free for the Lord's use, and that the surroundings and block too can be bought, believing that the church is in the capacity to do so, which was later bought. Brother Bakari with Brother Oshoko relayed this development to the Orudu villagers using a Suzuki car belonging to Brother Bakari, bringing down the group at Orudu to Okiaru, and a congregation was formed starting with prayer meeting and continuation of the village evangelism to Orudu, Oluwo, Eguri, Jabante, Igbaragun Ikeja, Robi Yon, and Intabo. But something was spectacular about Intabo. The team had to take along with them blankets to cover themselves while the villagers were make a firewood light to scare away tiny insects that bite. Afternoon Sunday school was later held for children collected from areas within Okiaro. Through the effort of this willing hand, the gospel spread to Oteilori. We started with prayer meeting. Brother Bakari and Sister Umoyi were heading the prayer meeting. But when the place became a, a Bible study center, I was surprised when Brother Shoinka said I was going to lead the Bible study center. So I started coming from Anthony to Kearo to lead the Bible study center. And that Bible study center metamorphosis to become the, the church. Okearu Church started on the 9th of September 1990. That was the very day the church was inaugurated by late uh, Africa Vasia Reverend Zio Shuinka. At the time we were starting, we were less than a hundred. We were less than a hundred. And gradually, God started enlarging our coast. And then um, we blew some up to four, 450, I think, by the time uh, I left uh, um, Okearo for Ifo. Hello Jumu was brought from Agege Church to become our interpreter and uh, Brother Ojoye also came from uh, uh, Antony uh, to become our head usher and later uh, one of the ministers. Uh, the prominent members were Brother Jumu, uh, Brother Joye. Then we had elders there, uh, Brother Kukoli, uh, Brother Shoumi, then Oshoku, um, and then Elijah Bakari, and one other brother Elijah. We started the church in the uh, present uh, children's hall, and even the children's hall was not uh, as big as uh, what it is now. Uh, Mrs. Polashadi Campbell gave us that building at that time and it was on a plot of land. And uh, thereafter, we decided to buy uh, additional uh, space. And um, there were about three dormitories, so we were able to buy just one of the dormitories along with that building. And then thereafter, the other two dormitories uh, and a, a bakery uh, were still on, on the compound. Uh, we bought the two additional uh, dormitories and later the, the last one, which is the bakery, uh, we uh, purchased 
her long too. And the bakery was where the prayer room uh, is presently. Uh, and then we had to um, expand uh, the bakery. In fact, we had um, um, a retreat in the bakery, and the whole bakery was filled up. Therefore, we decided to uh, reconstruct the bakery. And then uh, we had to reconstruct the bakery to the present uh, size of the church. And at the time we were doing that, we gave ourselves about 10 year uh, plan uh, program. That is within uh, 10 years, we expect that uh, that uh, uh, church may be expanded. The building there given to us to be using, uh, I felt that the roofing is too low. And I told the people that well, we should, we should practice something which wasn't done anywhere, except that I had it from a overseas a apostolic faith. And that is uh, moving the roof upward. We did that and it was successful. Uh, when I told the people that, uh, well, as we don't uh, have a, a good enough water, we should do something about it. We dug the well, we couldn't get uh, water in time until we reach 161 feet. It's God and my husband. I'm working under my husband. My husband is a pastor. It is because this time around, it's a bit down. Children Hall is three months from foundation. The people of God rally around. We work with unity. God did many things for us. The church, the tarazo, the staircase, the toilet, vehicles, generators. God did many things. And God did the education of the church for us. I met the church. It was done and it was okay. Death, the surrounding. Yet to be completed. I design the beautification of the sovereignty. So, and then make that uh, uh, area more beautiful than it is. Uh, it was before uh, the first, first war. So it was uh, plastered. The first gutter was done too. The first to be started was uh, some go church uh, at the time uh, late brother Kazue was the pastor of uh, uh, Ifo church but I showing requested uh, brother Kazue and uh, my humble self to look for a land uh, in the um, Songo um, in Joko Axis for the purpose of building a church in that area. But um, uh, later on, uh, when Brother Akazwe left for Ghana, um, uh, um, God provided us a church in uh, Songo yeah. through the assistance of one Brother Paulon Shaw, who donated a, 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 a factory mm. for the use of Songo Church. Uh, Ojo Kuru started. Ojo Kuru started. But um, Ojo Kuru, we can primarily say it was a product of Agege. But there were some members from Okearo who went there. We started with uh, Itoke. 
do now we we were by then we we were doing a Bible study there, but no flesh church there. So then plant a church was planted and dedicated. After that time we embark on a uh, Akuti, mm. Akuti Church. In the school, mm. we are doing a, a Bible study. God help us to buy a piece of land there mm. that we can erect church there. Mm. And we started the building. We were able to finish the building mm. and dedicated that Koye, uh, have a plot of land that Madakolo. Uh, and then we both have more from their family, making one so that we can erect a church building there or start a Bible study there. When I came here, I met Koye at the shed with uh, four poles and the, the roof on the property. Thank God, God has changed it to a better position. We are hoping that the other future became a so the school station from that grand church. I met two Bible study center, the Akela and the Obawale. Beside the Ukaro here, we have Akela, Obawale, then Matogu, Adinyo, Olambe, Oyemi Idu. We are hoping uh, that is Jeja. Very soon, we are hoping to be upgraded up, 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 to Grand Church, because according to the information, you have many people over there which have accepted the gospel. Because of the accommodation in Okearo and the size of the land, uh, which will accommodate a number of cars and uh, buses, uh, that if the teachers conference are held there, there won't be any problem regarding parking space and uh, uh, accommodation. On the 19th of September 2010, at a combined service at Anthony, um, the creation of Lagos North was announced. And uh, I was uh, uh, appointed the first district overseer of that uh, new uh, district. And the headquarters was uh, uh, put at Okearo. So Okearo became the first headquarters of uh, the Lagos North district. That was what brought me back to uh, Okearo again. The road network to uh, Okearo was in a deplorable uh, condition. They now, um, you know, transferred the, 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 the headquarters from Okearo to Free City. Oh, uh, Okearo, at Free City, we wanted to build, a, to build a two houses. There's one for me and one for but we could be able to start with one then and uh, before I left the place uh, we, the, the first we ate was taken and we could use that place for camping. Uh, the land that is in Jeja, by the grace of God, God provided us uh, two parts of land there and uh, uh, first it, first it have me here. So, and thank God, God provided us uh, one giant tree and a uh, small bus, little bus, fort. Construction is ongoing at Ijeja, with the building at roofing level to be added to the Bible Study Center soon. During these past 25 years, Okiaru have had five different leaders starting with Reverend Peter Haumoi from September 9, 1990, handing over to Reverend Michael Honoyemi on September 28, 1998, after serving for eight years. 
Reverend Michael Onoyemi handed over to Reverend Javet Agbaji in the year 1999 and had been late for a period of one year. Reverend Javet Agbaji handed over to Reverend Dili Akonde on October 5, 2002, after serving for three years. When Okiaru became a district headquarters, Reverend Dili Akonde handed over to Reverend Peter Haumoyi, having pastored for eight and a half years when the district was moved to Faith City in 2012. The current zonal coordinator, Reverend Solomon Fatoki, came on board. Immediately after the wedding of brother and sister Isaac Daudu, they were posted to Okiaru in September 9, 1990. Joining them were brother and sister Emmanuel Pupola, newly wedded couple also, were transferred from the headquarters on December 11, 1990. And that formed the first choir and orchestra. Later, brother Yemi Fakmonli, Sheye Banjo, and sister Bumi, Ronke Adigbuyi, Bode Onifadi, Umi, and Mama Odesonya were transferred to Okiaru from the headquarters. The youth are not left out as special attention had given to them to nurture them in the way of the Lord organizing special post-secondary coaching, ICT training, and the like. The National Youth Rally of Campus Association of Visiting Secretaries, Campus ABS, now known as Apostolic Faith Campus Fellowship, they held in Okiaru in 1993, 2000, and 2001. Okiaru Youth Day is an annual program held either second or third Sunday in February. Dedicating a Sunday for the youth to highlight key challenges facing the youth, giving suggestions to live a blameless life in this present world, and to interact and meet Christian friends. It was first held on February 15, 2015. Okiaro Youth Picnic is a time to refresh and gather together in a serene environment to appreciate the beautiful creation of our Lord and a time to discuss issues facing the youth. It was first held on July 25, 2015. The first vehicle to be used was given by the headquarter church in Antony, which is a long bus properly known as Mole, and later Toyota and Mazda were added. Currently, the church has three buses for the propagation of the gospel, which include a Zion train, a Ford, and unhealthy buses. Oh, we were like a uh... Family. And I can say that they are spectacular to me. Okiaro. Yeah. It was a uh, Okiaro that I enjoyed most. Oh, I, I enjoyed them. They were a good start. Very supportive. Very cooperative.